Hello again music fans, I am here for another music update video. Alright, and this time I do have a, a little bunch here. I wouldn't call it a haul because I didn't buy them all in this, at the same time. You know, I th uh, they were all bought online, but I think in three different shipments. Let's start now with, uh, shall we say, the softest one. Here, one that is not even a, a metal album, nor even rock for that matter. It is um, the solo album for Annette Olsen called Shine. Now, who is she, you might ask? Let's see if that rings a bell. She was the singer of Nightwish that replaced the uh, Tarja Turunen, you know, their original singer, the one that with the oper operatic voice. And so she was the replacement of um, of that original singer for two albums. All right, uh, one of them was Dark Passion Play. The other one, I cannot recall the, the title. But anyway, she was there for two albums, and then she was let go. And now, of course, the singer is uh, Floor Jansen. And uh, when she um, got out of Nightwish, she released this solo album here called Shine, which is a very, um, like I said, it's it's more of a pop album, really, with some touches of uh, electronica right in, in there. But still, very good melodies. You know, and of course, I, I bought it because I'm a big fan of her singing. You know, I did like the albums that she put out with Nightwish. And she had a more, a less of an operatic voice, more towards the rock side, more rather more more towards the rock and pop side. Okay, so and it also on solo album, pretty good. Now we go with with Nightwish. Here we have um, Showtime Story Time. All right, two CD live set recorded at the Vakken Open Air Festival. Right there, so I can. Keep uh, keep at it, filling up my Nightwish uh, discography. It and this is very very good, and Floor Jansen I think is a perfect singer for for Nightwish. You know, of the three of them that they had, uh, the their original one Tarzia, she was, uh, of course she had the operatic voice, but it was sometimes a bit too much, you know, and so I believe this singer is kind of like the best of both worlds. In my previous update, I showed some Camelot, and I also said that I wanted to get their entire discography. Well, I am getting there little by little. This is their, as of the making of this video, this is their latest. It is um, The Shadow Theory. Very good. Excellent. You know, Camelot, one of those bands that I believe have never put out a bad album. This is, in fact, the, the two CD version. This is the, the special edition where with the bonus CD being the entire album in instrumental form. Now, usually I wouldn't spend the extra money for, for something like that, you know, but in this case, the online site that I bought this from, uh, this one, the two CD one, was actually cheaper than the regular version for, for whatever reason. Okay, so I bought this one. The Shadow Theory. Great American power metal. Two here from Arch Enemy for which I also want to fill up the discography. The first one is A Rise of the Tyrant. This is the last, uh, I believe it was the last studio album with uh, Angela Gasso, all right? Their second singer, not their original singer, okay? Because the original singer of Arch Enemy was a, was a man, but um, the, the blonde girl that came later and in fact catapulted them into fame. So, filling up also the Arch Enemy discography. And uh, the one I'm missing also with uh, with Angela on vocals is, I believe it was called, uh, the name, the title of the escapes me. I'm going to put it down here. All right. But anyway, really heavy stuff here. Modern death metal. The second one here from Arch Enemy is The Root of All Evil. Now, this is one of those albums where the band re-records uh, their, their greatest hits or their classic songs. In this case, they re-record the songs from the first three Arch Enemy albums, which did not feature Angela Gasso on vocals, with her on vocals. So this is her doing studio versions of those, um, of those tracks. And I really dig it. 
You know, I'm a big fan of, of hers as a, as a death metal vocalist. In fact, I do prefer her over the their current singer, whose name is Alisa White Gluss, I believe. All right, who is a very good singer, but but Angela is way better. You know, has a much more of a variety to her voice. Okay, this is the root of all evil. You know, other bands that have done things like that where they re-record uh, stuff, like Kiss has done it, Testament has done it, um, I believe also Anthrax has done it, you know, and a whole bunch of other bands. And now in the in the video where um, you know where um, we talk about bands where you're late to the party for, and I mentioned Death. Well, here you go. Not late to the party anymore. Individual thought patterns. I had to listen to this, and holy crap, you know, really good stuff. A very progressive. All right. Not as super brutal as some of modern uh, death metal, but that's okay, you know, because I want my my metal to have some some uh, dynamics to it, and that's what you get here. This is the relapse reissue, which includes a second disc uh, that is live in Germany in April 1993. Individual thought patterns by death, classic metal right here. Speaking of classic metal. Here we have some Judas Priest. Uh, the remasters haven't taken out the plastic yet. Here, that's why the glare. We have, of course, Screaming for Vengeance. Incredibly enough, I didn't have this one. And also, incredibly enough, um, when I ordered, made the, made the order uh, for this album, I ordered um, Hellbent for Leather. But they mixed it up and they sent me this one instead. But how can you complain? Because I don't have this one either. So I'm not going to return it or anything. I'll just make another order for Hellbent for Leather. All right, so classic priest right there. And now a couple here from Dream Theater. First one that I've had for a long time, but when I did my um, artist spotlight on Dream Theater, for some reason I forgot to include it. It is uh, Black Clouds and Silver Linings right there. Which I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe this was the last album with um, um, Portnoy on drums. All right, their their founding member bassist. I mean, excuse me, drummer, of course. All right. So, Black Clouds and Silver Linings. It has only six songs, so this is a one with a lot of epics to it, you know, and a great album. And the other one is the as of the making of this album, of this video, the newest one, which is a distance over time. Okay, I have a, uh, gave it a listen, and it is really really good. I really liked it, and of course I I'm a big fan of progressive rock and of course progressive metal, and uh, that can be a bit uh, complicated and a bit overwhelming for a lot of people, but I must say on first listen, just on first listen, this was really really. Um, accessible and easy to get into you know after the hugely bloated one that was uh, the astonishing their previous studio album which was a two CD set that was just went on forever and ever and it was really quite boring to be to be honest this one has nine songs and uh, the longest one clocking it at nine at 20 you know but it's it is a from there it's shorter songs and it's much more focused and of course the album itself is is not that long all right distance over time and curiously enough here you see the hype sticker it is not a sticker it is actually put on the printed on the album cover itself and you know what i said about being accessible after i i listened to it first for the first time then i i read the hype sticker and what it says and it says exactly uh one of the most accessible and varied albums of their long history all right so that's really a, a characteristic of this uh, of this album. You know, it's uh, um, easier to get into. The last album I'm going to show is from Kiss, and it is their Kiss World, the best of Kiss uh, compilation of their greatest hits. Now, of course, if you saw my uh, artist spotlight on Kiss, you see you know that I have everything. You know, I have all their studio albums. So why the hell did I buy this? I do have also other compilations, 
excuse me the the reason being is because the online seller for this had a, a promotion where if you buy this which was really cheap you got a free kiss lithography let me show you there it is okay so you got this for free and um, so I thought you know what what the hell I'm gonna buy it even if I don't need another greatest hits and when I was when I made the purchase you know I, I thought you know when I get it I'm gonna frame it but uh, I think not because if you look at the picture closely you'll see that it is the photograph is distorted you know it's like it's been squished and you see that the the band members are there are kind of thinner than what they're supposed to be like I don't know if they did that on purpose or it's a mistake you know so I don't think I'm gonna frame this because every time I look at it I'm gonna be thinking oh good grief it's all squished but anyway it's nice to have as a collectible and by the way as a greatest hits compilation this is really good because it's got 20 songs and it includes stuff from their entire career you know up until uh, monster which is their well their last studio album all right so and also stuff from sonic boom you know modern day Delilah, and even from the from the album killers which was in itself a bit of a compilation album with some studio tracks thrown in it's got i'm a legend tonight the only ones that i do not see represented here the only albums are the elder also uh carnival of souls so no songs from there either and no songs either from hot in the shade which was the last album with uh, eric carr all right so kiss world recommended if you want to have just a all the hits in one place all right well that's it for my update here for april 2019 thank you very much for watching and so long